Okay, so going over the actual timeline of events, I tried to make this as concise as possible because there are a lot of conflicting um, accounts of, you know, who actually threw, like, the first object at the police, who actually, like, um, got in the first physical altercation with the police um, because, you know, at this time, social media really wasn't a thing. So most of the testimony is, like, eyewitness testimony and as we all know that can be a little bit unreliable especially if you're you know emotional and in a traumatic event such as this one so I'm trying to make it as concise and like um succinct as possible for you guys so basically before the actual writing began what happened on um June 24th 1969 is that police conducted like a routine raid of the bar and um, arrested employees and confiscated their liquor. So to give a little to give a little background, at this time it was illegal for establishments like bar establishments to hire gay um, employees, and a lot of them had to operate illegally because they couldn't get legal liquor licenses because they were operating as gay bars. So. Um, a lot of these, like, underground bars and stuff, like, um, like Stonewall um, Inn, they pretty much had to operate illegally just to provide, you know, that place for gay people in Greenwich to go and, you know, have that community and have that family feel um, that they probably or, like, most likely did not have outside of that bar. So... Um, like I said, a lot of these bars were run illegally, basically just by being open, but seeing as how they acted as sanctuaries for LGBT folks at the time, they were pretty crucial. Um, so by like 1960, most of the privately owned bars in, um, New York City had been closed, like privately owned gay bars, and the Stonewall bar was like one of the only ones left. So it was very significant that, um, you know, the police would come in and raid them and and you know, arrest employees and like arrest patrons who were dancing too close to each other and like legally touching each other like um you would also be arrested if you were like um dressed or masquerading as another gender other than your own like per other than your like perceived gender i guess by the police if they looked at you and decided that you know you weren't dressed appropriately you could be arrested things like that um so like i said june 24th the police conduct a raid um, and, um, basically what they, according to testimony, what they had, um, originally planned to do was to come back that Friday, conduct another raid and try to get the bar shut down completely. So what ended up happening was plainclothes officers enter the bar on the 27th of June. Um, they target more employees and those like patrons who were dressed in drag and cross dressers. Um, and then, what ended up happening, which usually did not happen, the police were used to just coming in and arresting people and then leaving. What ended up happening is a crowd of patrons and bystanders um, began to grow as like the paddy wagon rolled up to take these people to jail, right? So it just got, um, it was just more of a contentious event than usual because um, I guess people had just had enough of police persecution and um, um, bystanders were coming by and they were seeing what was going on and they were stopping so there was more of a crowd um, people got more antsy stuff like that so what happened in the early hours of June 28th like that same night um, riots began after the police started to rough up certain um, people that they had arrested um, and it was starting to agitate the crowd so one account that I saw that I put in the PowerPoint is um, people got upset after they saw um, a prominent like lesbian activist being roughed up and um, she was complaining that her um, what is this called? handcuffs her handcuffs were too tight and they were like roughing her up and so people were getting um, agitated and taunting officers throwing objects slashing police tires um, many people attribute the first objects being thrown to two trans like prominent trans women and trans activists Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. There are also still conflicting reports whether they were actually the first ones to throw it um, or throw objects at all, but that is what most articles and things that I read attribute to the start of this riot. So that's what I put in the PowerPoint, but just a disclaimer. Um, 
So the crowd got um, a lot more rowdy, basically, than the police anticipated, and they had to barricade themselves inside of the bar until more riot police arrived. And um, that those events continued into the night until about 4 a.m. Um, so what ended up happening after that was the bar actually opened the same day, or like the following day it opened again. Um, so a lot of supporters gathered in solidarity, um, you know, just to protest, you know, the mistreatment that um, the patrons had um, received the night before. So police eventually arrive again and they start to beat and tear gas protesters. And this continued into the early hours of the next morning. So then for the next several nights from like the 29th to July 1st, um, many community like gay community activists took advantage of the momentum of these riots and used this time to spread information and build coalitions and build community support um for you know their movements and more radical um you know iterations of the movement than they had seen before so then police returned that same looks like those same few days but the events were a lot less confrontational it wasn't nearly as violent maybe a few skirmishes but you know, nothing like being tear gassed and beaten and things like that. And then on July 2nd, what a lot of gay activists did was protest like media coverage of the event because a lot of the outlets and like newspapers referred to the events, you know, using um, homophobic slurs and minimizing, you know, the, um, the, the brutality that the police um, subjected these people to. And then some newspapers chose not to cover it at all, or, like, if they did cover it, it was, you know, like a small blurb on, the, like, the last page of the newspaper. So there was a lot of, like, media censorship in terms of the events that actually happened and just a lot of um, bigotry in terms of, you know, those newspapers that did actually choose to cover the events.